Uh, thanks so much. Uh, this is Hema Prado. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm the Director of Sustainability at the American Egg Board. So I'm excited to be here. I just joined American Egg Board uh, just two months ago. I see some familiar names from my prior life. I came over from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and I am charged with looking at ways to um, really uh, examine and move the egg industry through a journey of sustainability uh, at the American Egg Board. Uh, so we can go to next slide. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a very quick overview of where the American Egg Board is for the egg industry. And uh, follow, following that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Ryan Bennett, uh, who's going to talk about some broader sustainability initiatives that encompass both the egg and the broiler poultry industries. And I really want to allow him to have a good amount of time because uh, I think what some of the projects, that, the, the project that he's going to talk about is going to be of keen interest to this audience. So, but I first want to give you a little bit of a snapshot of where we are at with it at AEB. So one of the key goals at AEB, American Egg Board, is uh, to give voice to our farmers' values, responsibly producing a safe, sustainable, nutrient-rich protein that is part of the solution to global malnutrition. So how, uh, how would we go about that goal? Uh, there's a few strategies that we would take to do that. One is to tell the production story in a way that augments um, the story about eggs as a food. Another is to update the science. Um, another is to strengthen relationships with customers through the food chain. Another is to unite the industry around the value of sustainability and the value of corporate social responsibility. Uh, and finally, another way would be to partner, um, partner with stakeholders, NGOs, um, other uh, shareholder, you know, stakeholders that have interest and uh, credibility and influence and expertise around sustainability. So one of the, so yes, that slide, uh, next slide. Uh, actually, the slide you're on is good. Um, so one of, the, one of the approaches I mentioned was about uh, the science. And one way you can approach sustainability from a scientific perspective is by conducting a life cycle assessment. I don't um, believe this would be a new concept to this audience necessarily, but just to uh, quickly go over what, what this concept means, at least for us, is uh, we're looking at a life cycle assessment as an evaluation of environmental impacts, such as CO2 emissions, use of water, uh, energy and land, waste production. Um, and it's a way of calculating your environmental impact for uh, production across the industry and uh, as well as distribution and use of your product. Um, and finally, it's an, a validated and science-based um, process to do so, ISO compliant. Um, and really, when people talk about conducting an LCA, they're talking about the, you know, really reaching into the fundamentals. Um, I hear this phrase a lot, actually. Um, I just heard it again this week, but you, you can't know where you're going in your sustainability journey if you don't know where you're at right now. Um, so this is a really good way to establish your baseline. Uh, so next slide. So um, the, the American Egg Board, and uh, together with the Egg Industry Center, um, and we, we actually, had, there was a collaboration that was done in 2013 that allowed the release of an LCA that actually measured the, uh, the footprint, environmental footprint of the egg industry over a 50-year period. So between 1960 and 2010, this study, it was a landmark study, and it looked at um, how the footprint changed over that time and why it changed. And a couple of the key findings that came out of that were the, that there was a finding that the egg industry had reduced its greenhouse gas emissions by 71% over that 50 years and had 31% lower cumulative energy demand. And why? What, why, was there, uh, why was there a reduction in environmental footprint? Uh, primarily, there were three factors. One was efficiency in background systems. Another was changes in feed uh, composition, and the third was Im improved bird, bird performance. Um, the findings of that study were published, as you can see here on the screen, um, and we were really uh, proud of this endeavor. Uh, next slide. So um, that, again, that was published in 2013, and it looked, uh, looked at data up until 2010. So where are we at today? We're actually conducting an update to this LCA, and the reason why we're doing it is because the egg industry, it's not really a secret, but it's really transformed and changed significantly in the last 10 years. So the data that um, came out of that landmark study was really, is, it's still really important and valuable, but 
we really want to have some updates to make sure that we're accounting for some of the production styles that weren't previously measured. Um, for example, cage-free production, which has really taken off. So right now we are uh, conducting an LCA that was just launched um, this summer, and it's going to include 11 site types. Um, which includes conventional cage-free production, processing, breaker systems, feed mill systems. And this is being led by the Egg Industry Center. Um, and we're also partnering with United Egg Producers who is driving the communications and outreach to producers to ensure a high level of buy-in and participation. It's really critical that we get good participation from the industry on, uh, on the LCA. And American Egg Board is going to be supporting this data collection effort. And really our role is also going to be in leading communications and outreach with downstream uh, customers. Um, we also have a contractor that we're engaging with, um, Qantas, uh, that many of you might have uh, heard of in this kind of in an LCA context, um, and they are charged with helping to make the LCA outcomes accessible for stakeholders and downstream customers. Uh, next slide. So where are we at? Um, so we right now we are in the middle of the survey, which is really exciting. It was kicked off uh, just in July and it's going running through the fall. So we're hoping to get really good information from producers uh, of those different site types right now through the fall. Um, and so we're really aiming for a release uh, sometime next year. Uh, next slide. Other egg industry efforts. So, um, you know, really the measurement of sustainability is just an important, it's a first step in the sustainability journey. Again, it's it's to establish your baseline, it's to see where you're at, look at what your opportunities are, look at what, um, you know, it, and opportunities could mean technical, it could mean education, it could mean target setting, it could be anything, right? And so any industry that's trying to assess their sustainability can learn a lot after they establish their baseline and understand their footprint. Um, but there's other work we're doing as well. Um, we're working with collaborators to look at other research opportunities, whether it's to look at innovation or tools or strategies for continuous improvement. Another thing we're doing is looking at uh, partnership opportunities and outreach opportunities, whether it's with the food supply chain com um, companies or with influencers that are interested in sustainability. So there's, there's other ways to work while we're working on uh, waiting for the results here of this study. Next slide. So um, this is uh, uh, this is a slide where I'm hoping to kind of bridge into Ryan's presentation, which is next. So as we just talked about, the egg industry is doing our LCA to see where we're at now. I consider it kind of what you might call a snapshot of today. Um, but then, how do you enable continuous improvement? Where do you go from there? How do you put tools in the hands of producers to really, or even customers to really um, check, measure, um, apply metrics to, to the sustainability questions that are important today? Um, so that's where a sustainability framework can come in. And in this case, um, there is one from the US Roundtable for Sustainable Poultry and Eggs that's been developed for both the poultry and the egg industries. And in our case, our sustainability framework is a comprehensive reporting structure that measures and verifies sustainability in various areas that are important to our industries. And it's going to be a voluntary effort. It's, it's an effort to provide uh, an ability for transparency for stakeholders and help drive that continuous improvement. So I think, um, this slide, as you can see, there's an and in the middle. Um, rather than looking at LCAs and frameworks as a, you know, this or this, we, in, at least in the egg industry and the poultry industry, we consider it an, an and pro proposition. By having both, you, you're you able to really drive sustainability science forward and you're able to really set your baseline and allow for those metrics to continue into the future. Uh, next slide. So at this point, I'm going to turn um, turn the mic over to uh, Ryan Bennett, Executive Director of the U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Poultry and Eggs. And um, one thing I should mention, American Egg Board is a member and a supporter of the Roundtable, and we're excited uh, to be a part of that effort. Thank you so much. Um, so um, as was mentioned, I'm going to be talking about the U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Poultry and Eggs sustainability framework, what that is, and the process that we went through. Um, to develop that. And so the first part of um, key component of that is the collaboration effort. So collaborating with those like the American Egg Board, um, growers, uh, allied industry researchers, uh, integrators and 
processors, civil society and NGOs, as well as retail and food service is really key and what underpins um, the focus of the roundtable. Uh, so it's a team effort, um, building understanding and trust and communication and transparency all through the supply chain. So as you can see here, um, here's some of our members. Um, you can see that multi-stakeholder concept coming through that's represented on our board and both how we vote and do things on an official basis, but also on our committees. We make sure that we have growers, allied industry, research, retail food service, allied industry, NGOs, and civil society represented there. So it's everybody working together to define sustainability. And then from there, um, how are we going to measure that and show continuous improvement over time? So as was mentioned before, we're not unique in terms of our definition of sustainability. It's in our mission statement, uh, but we're focused on things that are environmentally sound, socially responsible, and economically viable. Um, so what is the framework? From our point of view, it's the first ever multi-stakeholder sustainability measurement and reporting structure for the full U.S. supply chains for chicken, turkey, and eggs um, from farm to fork, producer to final consumer. So once again, here's an example of the broiler uh, chicken supply chain, um, starting out with breeders, uh, hatchery, grow out, processing, further processing, retail and food service. We have feed manufacturers and renders renderers in, as well as, as I mentioned before, some of those civil society and NGO members um, that provide input into our organization. So we're really focused on the full supply chain. Uh, one thing to note, uh, if you want to see it, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but if you want to see the framework, we are going through a public comment period here. We would welcome your comments. Uh, we just got through the first round of the public comment period, but we're getting ready to go into the second. Um, public comment period. Um, so happy to take your comments there if you want to flip through that and provide comments. Uh, simple to complex. Um, uh, that's available at us-rspe.org under the framework tab. Um, so how, how do we do this? So the first thing that we did, obviously, we defined sustainability, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but we started out with a big list of indicators or issues generally um, that we wanted to uh, look at, that we felt like were the most important or material things to sustainability. And those fell um, very neatly under people, planet, and poultry. And as you might imagine, we might have started with 70 or 80 of these and narrowed them down to the top 14 uh, indicators that fall under our three pillars of people, planet, and poultry. And then underneath of those, uh, we developed metrics. And those metrics, um, um, you know, would obviously go into more detail and ask more specific questions um, related to these different indicators or issue areas. And what we've really found is in, in you know, uh, chicken, turkeys, and eggs, is that people are at different stages of their sustainability journey. So we didn't want to create a one-size-fits-all program. We really wanted to build something that met people where they're at. Um, challenged them in terms of um, getting better and showing more continuous improvement, but providing a roadmap for people to figure out where they are now and how they can do more and how they can do better. So that really led us to this three uh, tiers of entry, achievement, and advance, which really helps people get started on their continuous improvement and sustainability journey. Um, we have big companies that are just starting their programs, small companies that are very have very well-developed programs, and, and vice versa. So trying to meet people where they're at and give people a vision of where they can grow their sustainability work in the future. Um, so right now, we're in that member and public comment period. Um, we'll go through another round. We're going, we went, just went through um, a huge list of uh, revisions. Well, not a huge list, but a huge number of meetings to discuss the revision. After that first public comment period, we'll have our second public comment period and then make refinements. Uh, we'll have a final version of the framework released by the end of this year. And then our reporting tool will launch uh, late Q1 of 2022. So that's where people will actually be able to log in, provide their information and get some feedback. So we hope that this will help increase trust, reduce risk and grow demand by um, providing more transparency and demonstrating sustainability over time. 
Um, after the launch, um, when people begin reporting, they'll get individualized data for their organization that shows them kind of where they're at, both in terms of those tiers um, and where they can do more over time. Um, you know, providing continuous improvement reports over time, so year over year type reports. And then we'll receive aggregate information um, on each of these three supply chains and as a whole. And what that will allow individual companies or organizations to do and allow our organization to do is figure out where we're doing well and talk about that, but also talk about where we feel like we need to do better and work for it as an industry um, to remove uh, barriers to progress. So TBD, but we'll, likely be um, starting to issue um, you know sustainability reports on a year to year basis um, as a as a full supply chain uh, in chicken turkey and eggs. So what does that allow us to do? So obviously measurement is kind of the cornerstone. If we're not measuring, we don't know where we are, we don't know where we're getting better, we don't know um, you know where we're staying the same. Um, so then that would allow us to start to remove those barriers to continuous improvement and sustainability progress uh, by starting to look at more things um, that allow us to show uh, more advancement in these areas. So that could be anything from uh, grants and research opportunities, um, innovative financing, sharing best practices, pilot projects, um, doing more outreach and communication, getting you know more collaborative as was mentioned previously, um, and really just looking at removing those barriers to progress and allowing um, you know, the full supply chain to work together um, from beginning to end um, to help show that we're more sustainable and drive that sustainability progress over time. Um, so how could you get involved? As I mentioned, please feel free to provide um, comments via the public comment period at us-rspe.org. Um, there's a framework tab there where you can see the draft version of the framework. Um, that second public comment period is getting ready to open on September 23rd. Um, so you could provide comments there. Um, and then, um, you know, you could join the organization um, and also stay apprised of what we're working on and, and, how, and how we're working on those things, because they're obviously very, um, you know, contextual to what's going on in the industry. Um, and being able to impact many operations, many different birds and many people. So um, that's some ways that you can get involved. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you need to learn, if you would like to learn more. And thanks for hearing about uh, what we're doing at the American Egg Board and the U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Poultry and Eggs.